This is Olderhood Online. Welcome! Featuring Bill Story and Robin Trimmingham, founders of the Olderhood Group Bermuda. Olderhood Online brings you quality information and discussion on a variety of important topics for all ages. Olderhood proudly serves almost 100,000 followers in over 100 countries around the world. Now, here is your host for today's show. Welcome to Leaders in Action Looking Ahead podcast series. I'm Robin Trimingham of the Olderhood Group, and my guest today is Zuri Darrell, VP of Investor Services at Butterfield. Each week, Olderhood podcasts bring you lifestyle, personal development, money management, and health tips that you can listen to on the go and use right away because we break complex topics down into manageable bite-sized pieces. We also answer questions from our listeners, and we'll let you know how to contact us at the end of the broadcast. Today, our topic is retail investors and the stock market, getting started and making the best decisions for your future. Welcome, Zuri. Hey, Robin. Thanks for having me. Well, it's always great to chat with you. I learn so much when we do these podcasts. Um, I think thanks to social media, everybody's heard the term retail investing, but explain to us what exactly is that? So retail investing refers to the activities of retail investors, which means individuals, you and I, um, taking action in the markets. And this is a sharp contrast to institutional investors, which are the larger companies. So the biggest difference is size. So institutional investors usually consist of hedge funds, pension funds, institutional banks and fund companies. And the retail investors are smaller, more personal funds where people are investing their personal assets. Okay, well, that makes sense. So tell us, how have advances in internet technology made the market more accessible to individuals like you and me? Lots of ways. Uh, The age of the internet has been great. Um, Smartphone applications and the search engines have been great and they increased our amount of information that is out there for retail investors to self-direct their own accounts. So that's kind of in contrast to having a dedicated broker at a large institution Um, where in the past it was maybe higher trading commissions or minimum balance requirements or you just kind of had to be of a certain stature to have a brokerage account. But now it's really helped the everyday retail investor, which we mentioned, to have an account. So that's a really, really good way that technology has helped us because now it makes the playing field much easier and wide open and can get everyone involved into the actions of the markets. Well, I totally agree with you. The technology makes it easy for anybody to start, even from home, to do a little investing. When does it make sense for an individual to venture into the world of investing? Uh, The time to invest is always now, in my opinion. As we discuss in our webinar series, Investing is for Everyone, there's actually a price you pay for not investing now. If you talk to lots of people that are older in their careers, they they always say, you know, I wish I would have started investing early. I wish I would have started investing much earlier in life. So, um, you know, we can look at your circumstances and see where you are and what type of investments you can take. But when to start is always now if you haven't started already, because sitting on your money and not using the cash in your savings account is going to actually erode at the purchasing power because inflation is going to eat away at cash. Well, you're absolutely right. If you're not in the market, you can't really make a profit by investing. So tell me, what are the top three things that beginning investors need to understand before they embark on investing? Three things that I like to start with are time horizon, uh, risk profile, and diversification. So I'll I'll dive into uh, these three things uh, really quickly here so we can get a better understanding. So time horizon is specifically that kind of the time period before you're going to need the funds. So a great example is that if you just have a newborn baby and you want to save for their college tuition fund, um, your time horizon will be 18 years, assuming that they'll go to college when they finish high school. Also, your years to retirement is usually based on your age, but the years of how long you're going to retire is another time horizon. So if you're 45 years old and you're going to retire at 65, your time horizon is 20 years. So the next thing is uh, what we call risk profile. And the risk profile has two main caveats or two main things that go into it. One is what we call capacity for risk and the other one is a tolerance for risk. So the capacity is basically the ability to take risk depending on your unique circumstances. So kind of where you are on the stage of life, how much money you have saved, 
what are your expenses? Do you have a mortgage? Do you have kids? Do you have a husband, a wife? How does that work? And it's kind of just your ability to take risk on a kind of more metric perspective. Like we can work it out based on running some numbers. But the tolerance for risk is more important and harder to manage because it's what we call the sleep at night factor. So kind of how you feel personally about investing. And everyone has a totally different risk profile or risk tolerance based on their natural ability or natural feelings about risk. Do your investments keep you up at night because you think it's going to bubble around? So it's important to get a gauge and understand where you are on that spectrum. And we can back into what your risk profile looks like and make sure that the right investments are put in for your portfolio. And then the final third piece is uh, what we call diversification. And this is basically the ability to spread your investments around so all your eggs are not in one basket. Everyone's always heard this term, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And it's very important in investing because, you know, as one asset class is doing well, the other maybe not doing as well. So maybe if the stock market is up in technology sector right now, then maybe gold is not doing as well. But on vice versa, if the stock market is down a bit and maybe gold is doing a little bit better. So if you had your assets spread around a little bit in the equity markets and a little bit in gold and a little bit in the other factors, you're not going to have total exposure to the market when it comes off of it. No, those are pretty basic things, I agree. But to a novice, even those things can seem kind of intimidating. Uh, at Butterfield, if somebody comes to see you, you have like uh, questionnaires and whatever that you can give people to figure these things out, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we have risk correct profiles that we get the investor to, to fill out. There's no right or wrong answers to those. So, you know, it helps you kind of put yourself into a gauge of where you fit on the investor spectrum and the risk tolerance spectrum so we can make sure that you're choosing an investment that's suitable for you. Excellent. So I, I'm sure everybody is dying to hear the answer to this next question. Is retail investing a good way to get rich quick? Is that possible? I don't believe in get rich quick schemes, Robin. In just about all cases, get rich quick schemes um, involve taking more risk than is normally advised by your advisor or anyone that's kind of helping you based on your circumstances. It's very important that you look at what these investments are and, and take a calculated understanding of that rather than thinking it's going to make you a whole lot of money on dumping everything into something that you probably don't understand. Well, that makes sense. Um We've talked a lot about the word risk today. So what are some of the risks associated with retail investing? So the two main risks in, in investing, retail or otherwise, are what we call systemic risk and idiosyncratic risk or unsystematic risk. Systemic risk is just the overall market risk that usually affects the total market. I and mean, this can't really be diversified away. So this is pretty much like if the S&P 500 is up or down or because global growth is up, things that kind of affect everyone across the board, that is systemic risk. And we are all exposed to that because we live in this world. But the unsystemic risk is kind of the more important one that we need to use our diversification for because this is stock specific or industry specific risk or even asset class specific risk that cannot be diversified away. So if you have all your eggs in one basket, as we talked about, this is going to hurt you. So if you, for example, have a company that you've bought and this company comes into maybe a fraud or some sort of bad press from that specific company, that company is going to do poorly. But if you would have had your eggs spread around into a mutual fund or some ETF that is not all within that company, you wouldn't lose all your money. So it's important to diversify between those and get away from kind of the one stop shop. OK, so that's basically uh, like what people do, what's called day trading. Um, let me ask you another question. Just because of recent things in the media, there's a big temptation for people to get stock market information from social media like Reddit or Twitter. What's your take on this? So social media is not a bad thing. Social media is a powerful tool in today's media landscape, and there's lots of great information on social media. So it's not the medium exactly where the information is found, it's exactly what you do with that information, how you digest it, and if you act on it, and in what way you act on it. So, you know, I'd always suggest reading and understanding any information that you require that you get, whether it's from social media, from a book, or from an investment advisor, or from a friend, because you just have to understand the information. So it doesn't matter if it comes from social media or comes from wherever it comes from. 
or more important thing is that you're more informed about your investment choices and you're much better making decisions that are sound when you understand and are comfortable with what's in front of you. So you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. That that seems like very good advice to me. Um, if the people listening to this podcast have questions about retail investing, who can they turn to for help? Of course, they can call me. Also, you know, any financial professional who has experience in the securities markets can be a good resource if you have questions or if you're looking for guidance on how to start. Additionally, there's always plenty of, as we talked about, online tools, books, literature out there that are great at providing information necessary that you can use to get started. So there's plenty of resources out there. You always have to make sure you look at what's there and understand what's best for your situation. So what's the easiest way for somebody to get in touch with you and the members of the investor services team at Butterfield? You can email us. And our email address is invest at butterfieldgroup.com. And I'll repeat that again. It's invest at butterfieldgroup.com. Or also you can call our customer service line, which is 299-3817. Well, thank you, Zuri. That's about all we have time for today. If you'd like to ask a question or suggest a topic for an upcoming segment of this series, you can email us at bill, that's B-I-L-L at olderhood.com. And we look forward to chatting with you again soon. Take care, everyone. Butterfield Asset Management is licensed to conduct investment business by the Bermuda Monetary Authority. You've been listening to Olderhood Online. Thank you for being with us today. Bye for now.